you. Welcome to Let's Talk Ed and Zahi. We've been talking about flexibility in higher education, uh, specifically in the context of career and technical education since we've been celebrating CTE month. And we've talked about flexibility on the academic end as far as you know, different modalities, making classes available on different schedules, those sorts of things. But for, for colleges and universities to really make sure that they're being flexible for students, it's more, more than that. It, it also goes into the support services available for students too. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we talked in the past about the need to to have those services uh, services available when the student is available, which may be hard. And I remember you talking about figuring out part of our business model, part of our budget, how to make it work. So the the way I would present it to those uh, institution is to uh, uh, to think about the on demand availability of those support services when the student needs them, in the format that the student needs them, at the time they need them. So uh, so uh, many people have resorted to um, the online companies that serve um, tutoring or counseling, which are all great. However, they are limited and they may not be what the student is particularly comfortable with. They're wonderful tools, but they're one of so many in our uh, that should be in our toolbox. So we talked about food uh, being available. Does it mean that we need to have the cafeteria open? Maybe, or maybe the cafeteria provides uh, for an alternative approach doesn't require people to be there. Uh, we talked about uh, a bookstore. Maybe the bookstore should be uh, the place where we sell the food. Uh, during those off hours, uh, any variety of different uh, approaches that makes us more welcoming, but also provide the student uh, the support that she or he needs when they need it. You know, it surprises me that that uh, we complain that we're not seeing many students and our uh, enrollment offices are only open during our business hours, which are typically day hours. And then for the people who are done at five, six uh, in the evening, we're not there. How do they do it? Yeah, I mean, how many times have you walked into a building at night and it's a, a ghost town? Um, you know, you you may have some classrooms that that have classes going on, but if you need to talk to somebody in financial aid, if you need to talk to an academic advisor, uh, retention services, maybe go to the library or the bookstore, some of those things aren't available uh, at night. And I get it, it costs money. Um, you know, it's expensive to do, uh, but there's a little bit of, of finding a way because, you know, here again, if you can only take classes in the evening, for example, you know, you're working that nine to five job and, you know, yeah, I can get out and I can take a class at six o'clock. Um, but to enroll in that class, if I need to see an academic advisor and they're done at four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, how does how is that going to work? Uh, so, you know, finding ways to do that. Uh, finding ways to support those service, you know, th those students. If you're taking a, a math class of some sort in the evening and you're struggling and you want tutoring, uh, but the person that tutors math is only available from 10 to 12, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, how are you ever going to see that tutor? Um, and as you said, there are online services and they can be good, but you have to be you know, willing to engage in that method. Uh, there are a lot of students that do that and enjoy that, but it's not for everybody. So how do you find that balance of providing services to students that, uh, you know, again, it's not going to necessarily be at the same high demand maybe during the day, but you also can't just cut them out of the process altogether. 
Yeah, it's Im- imagine a hospital open when, uh, you know, during uh, those business hours. How many people would be furious? Right. Um, you know, our ER is only open Monday through Friday. Uh, right, you're going to have to so, go back yeah. to the emergency. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, rethink your emergency. So um, now I'm not saying that higher education is is as urgent as some of the healthcare, healthcare needs, but they are in the grand scheme of things, and especially if we look long term for economic and, and community and, and workforce development, we are integral. We are the place where those things happen. So how can we provide those is, is, is uh, perhaps the challenge that we need to figure out. Besides this rage, um, I'm I'm just trying to to think about like tutoring uh, when we are in the classroom, even in a regular schedule. How often have you seen tutoring happen when the students are actually in the classroom? Do they need it? Um, so it's it's a. It doesn't end there as well, because we need to create a cohort from students who are coming. Uh, they're rushing in for a class or two and rushing out. How can you create a cohort? Those are essential because why is it essential? Because a cohort creates a, a siblinghood of support. It enhances retention, completion, and success. So I understand those are big and massive concerns to take on. But I think we have to do it now because the future is looking perhaps like it's gonna be more of those students who are gonna need more of those services. So rather than continuing on our downhill slope, how can we start providing the services so we can curb that and potentially start growing is perhaps an existential uh, concern. Yeah, it, it's it's really easy sometimes to think about how are we doing things that's that's convenient to us? Um, and you know, rather than looking at how can we do things that are convenient for students? And that's the lens, and I think that's the existential lens that we're going to have to look through. Um, is it one that we should have been looking through all along? Yes, but I also understand how and why it happens that you know we do things that are easy easy for us. We're not going to teach night classes because nobody wants to teach them. Um, You know, we're not going to have the cafeteria open at night because not many people go. Uh, I understand how those things happen, but now the question really becomes is what can we do to make sure that things like that happen? How does that work? And you know, I think you, you know, with food, for example, um, you know, there are campuses where your food options come out of a vending machine after a certain time. Um, is there a way that you can approach that so that, you know, no, you're not going to get, you know, a plate of spaghetti out of a vending machine, but can you get something that's a little bit better than a candy bar? Um you know, okay, we can't afford to have an academic advisor that's going to be, you know, working from two to 10 every day, but we've worked a schedule so that we have somebody that is available, you know, a couple of nights each week for a a certain amount of time. Um, I think there's a little bit of looking at our classes, you know, if you're asking somebody to do a research paper uh, and they have to go to the library, can they go to the library? Are, are they able to do that? And if not, how are you addressing that in your class? So there are a lot of existential issues to think about with all of these support services for students. And there's not an easy answer to any of this. Uh, if there was, uh, I think you and I would be uh, happily retired on a beach somewhere because we would have the money to be able to say we have the easy answers, but that's that's not the reality. So 
I can see you're you're burning to say something right now. No, no I, I I was thinking about the mojito on on a beach. But uh, <laughs> no, in in all seriousness, I, all I was gonna say is, it starts by taking steps. You know, you can go all in, but it might burn out individuals. It can upset the whole system that has been built that has been successful in large parts. So it's 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 thinking about what could be implementable in time. And and remember, the additional students we get is an additional purse of money that we wouldn't have seen otherwise. So it's it's not it's not just a one-way street for for our budget, it's a two-way street for our budget. Absolutely. So if you enjoy topics like this and you're watching us right here on YouTube, be sure and subscribe to our channel. Ring that bell right down below so you get notifications when we post new content. And of course, you can find us on all of your favorite podcasting platforms as well. So for Dr. Zahi Atala, I'm Chris Ford. We'll see you next time right here on Let's Talk Ed.